Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reezy. Today we're going to be talking about the Fichtean Curve. This is a plot structure that is a little more obscure. Um, on Tuesday we talked about Freytex Pyramid, which is one of the most popular and well-known plot structures out there. Today we're talking about the Fichtean Curve, which you may not have heard of, I hadn't heard of it before uh, doing the research for this video, but it's a really interesting one. I'm really interested to share it with you because even though I actually hadn't heard about this plot structure before, now that I've studied it, it actually really resonated with me a lot more than other plot structures. So this structure is explained in John Gardner's The Art of Fiction, so that's somewhere you can look if you want to learn more after this video, but I'll kind of give you the general rundown of the structure here. So the main principle is that this structure starts immediately with the rising action, followed by a series of obstacles, and it's typically a rather fast-paced structure. The main character basically goes through a series of different obstacles, each one escalating the tension on the way to finally reaching their goal. Creating a narrative packed with tension and a series of kind of mini crises along the way. Rather than open with exposition or an ordinary world beat like most plot structures, this one throws us right into the action and begins right at the start of the rising action. Any information we need to know is introduced during the rising action or during the series of obstacles. I really like this uh, as a writer and as a reader. I like to just get to the point. I don't like long introductory beats in my work um, and also as a reader. I really like to just, just get the story started. That's what we came here for. I think it's also often more interesting to fill in the gaps of exposition needed through those series of crises, which are more active plot points, than kind of having a more front heavy bunch of exposition. Um, so I'm very excited about this plot structure. So we're going to talk about an example because it's a more uncommon plot structure. I think the best way is going to be to look at it with an example because it doesn't really have its own unique plot points, you know? They're basically just kind of a few components. We begin with the rising action, there are a series of crises, and then we have the ending. So in that way, it's very malleable. You can have basically as many crises as your story needs. So we're gonna look at this with an example. We're gonna be using the novel Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Pretty popular novel, so my hope is that a good number of you guys have read this. If you haven't read it, it's pretty short and it's a fantastic novel. It's actually one of my favorites. Um, so I definitely recommend reading it and then coming back and watching this video. I first read this novel like three or four years ago and I remember when I read it thinking, wow, this is really, the structure of this seems so complex. I want to know how to structure a non-linear novel like this. And that's something I've been wondering for ages was, how do you structure a novel like this? And this is the answer. Um, and it's actually not as overwhelming uh, or mind-boggling as it seemed to me when I read it. So when I read this, I literally thought it was like a feat of novel structure. And so if like me, you read this and you were really impressed and enamored by how it was structured and how the tension builds non-linearly, and you've been wondering how to do that, Hopefully this video can provide some answers. So let's start with the first beat, which is the inciting incident, because this novel begins right at its inciting incident, which I love. This novel has a relatively famous first line. It begins, Lydia is dead, but they don't know this yet. So that's the inciting incident. We are thrown right into the action. By the third paragraph, Lydia's mother is already looking for her, having realized that she's missing. Now we have the first crisis. So this structure can really employ as many crises as you need. In this case, we have four of them. So in the first crisis, Lydia's family is told that her body was found in a nearby lake. And this crisis leads to narrative flashbacks about the family's history. So that exposition we need to understand the stakes is being filled in now rather than before the inciting incident. Next up, we have the second crisis. This is a pretty non-linear novel. So in this case, the second crisis actually happens in the past but it can also happen um, in the fictive present. We learn that 11 years before Lydia's death, Marilyn, the mother of the family, abandoned the family to go back to school, and without her, the family began to fall apart. We learn that Marilyn returns home relatively shortly after when she realizes that she's pregnant, um, but she's kind of lost her chance at academic success and the life she wanted, so she ends up putting that pressure onto her children. Next up, we have the third crisis. So this is back into the fictive present. We learn that Lydia's father, James, has been cheating on Marilyn. At the same time, we learn that the police have decided to close the investigation of Lydia's death because they've ruled it a suicide. This results in a massive argument between James and Marilyn, 
which results with James leaving. Finally, we have The Fourth Crisis. This one again happens non-linearly. This book really does ping pong back and forth. It's not the kind of book that has just a straightforward linear plot. Tension is really built out of order and it's done so with these series of crises. So the crises are building tension, but they don't happen in order. So in The Fourth Crisis, we flash back to the day that Lydia died and we see from her point of view. We learn she was misunderstood by her parents and she was mourning her brother's departure for college. Which, was, which had resulted in all of the family pressure being put on her as now the oldest in the household. We learn that she's interested in one of her friends, but he ends up rejecting her and explains that he's actually in love with her brother. The end of this crisis, we get to the book's climax, which very interestingly and actually very rarely actually happens before the beginning of the story because the climax in this case is Lydia's death. It's very, very rare for the climax of the book to happen in flashback, but because this book's plot is essentially completely out of order, it's a non-linear book, this is still the moment of highest tension, even though it did happen in the past. So in the flashback, Lydia takes a boat out onto the lake in the middle of the night. She wants to conquer her fear of water and try to regain control of her life. She jumps in, but ends up accidentally drowning and we learn the truth about her death. It wasn't a suicide, it wasn't murder. She died accidentally in a moment of trying to regain her own sense of power and control. So this leads to the falling action. Like in most books, this is a relatively brief beat that just gives us some closure. We get a glimpse of the family's new normal. Not all the loose ends are tied up, but there is a sense of how the family will be able to heal together going forward. So this is a structure that works really well if you have a very flashback heavy novel. Let's say you have two timelines. You can kind of ask yourself at each point, what is the crisis happening in the fictive present? And which crisis is happening in the fictive past and each one of them can kind of be paired together to create one of those little peaks in the story. This novel, literally this novel, I've been asking since I read this novel, how do I structure a novel like this? Um, once I remember in university I took a class on how to write a novel and the class ended up just being focused around novel openings and I think I even said to a friend, I was like, I want to know how to structure a novel like everything I never told you. I want to learn how to structure a really non-linear novel. And this structure can be an answer to that. You can use a series of crises as a way to bring unity between the past and the present and build tension even when the story is really out of order. So I hope that this is an interesting structure for you guys. Um, personally, I'm really enamored with this structure. Normally, I don't really use plot structures in my own work, but having now looked at this, this is kind of intuitively how I structure novels, whether they're non-linear or not. So I'm really excited to learn more about this one and kind of study it more because it makes a lot of sense to me. If you ever tried this structure, I would really be interested to hear because I know it's not a very common one. So please let me know in the comments if you have. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.